One of my favorite childhood treats that are cheesy, they are fried, they are golden, and they are incredible. Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we are going old school. We're making Nana's zucchini flowers. We're gonna stuff them. I, I actually did a video with Nana on these about 10 years ago, but it dawned on me that I never wrote the recipe because the woman does not measure. And when it comes to dough and batter and things like that, it can be quite tricky. So I reworked the recipe so that I could make sure that it was all perfect. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will have already seen that uh, I've been making these because we have a beautiful zucchini plant, multiples that are just growing and thriving. And we have lovely flowers that we can pick up pretty much every day. We pick a few. In fact, today I'm only stuffing like five or six of them because that's kind of the beauty of home growing and home cooking is that like every day you go out there, you've got, you know, fresh zucchini and cucumbers and blackberries and it's truly uh, very heartwarming. So I don't grow it, my husband does because I can kill an actual artificial plant. So having said all that, let's get going on making the batter. It is a yeasted batter. Um, if you don't put yeast in it, it just doesn't taste the same. So let's get started. Um, let's do, it doesn't really matter. We'll do flour. I'm not using, I'm using instant yeast. I'm not using active dry yeast. If you were using active dry yeast, then you would need to proof your yeast in some warm water first, but I'm not doing that. And then you need some salt, some yeast, stir that around. And then to this, you're gonna add an egg. These are beautiful eggs from our chicks. And then you're gonna add some water. Now, this is gonna resemble uh, the texture of like pancake batter, right? Typically one-to-one -one is good. And truth be told, sometimes I add the egg, sometimes I don't. I do, mamma mia. I do find that with the egg, I tend to like the texture better. And my Nana always uses an egg, so I don't know why I veer away from what I know is good, but I'm just used to it. That is way too thick. I want this to be, like I said, pancake batter. I don't want it to be like a thick dough. That is perfect. It's always one to one. So if I use one, it's usually one cup of flour, very easy. A cup of flour, one egg, a cup of water, teaspoon of yeast, teaspoon of salt. That's all it is. And it works every single time. Sometimes it just depends on like the humidity and the blah, blah, blah. You may need a bit more water. You may need a less, little bit less water, but you're looking for pancake-like consistency. And if any of your flour has little lumps in it, it's okay. Very much like pancake batter when you don't overwork a batter, um, it actually ends up with being the best result, the best like light and fluffy uh, end product is what I'm getting at. <laughs> if you don't add the yeast in here, it will not be the same. This is gonna get covered and I'm gonna let it rest for like an hour and a half or so. I want this to be bubbly and activated and perfect. And then I'll show you what to do next. All right, it's been like an hour and a half. It's not gonna double in volume like a dough would, but you can see there's lots of bubbles, so you're gonna get a lot of airiness, and when we fry these, they're gonna be light and delicious and the perfect coating. I stuff them just like Nana does with a little bit of ricotta and a little bit of like a mild provolone, or you can use, um, you can use whatever you want. I wouldn't use anything too wet, like a fresh mozz or anything, because it, you know, it could be just too much moisture when you go to fry them. This is what they look like. Um, this is what zucchini flowers look like. These are a little on the small side, but like I said, we, we just kind of take them, um, we take them daily for the most part, and then just make frittatas with them, whatever. You wanna get rid, oh, there's a bee in there. <laughs> you wanna get rid of that. See, that's nature, it's good stuff. I'll give that one an extra rinse, but don't worry, they've all been washed. So you wanna take, take the core out, okay? By the way, that's how you get a successful garden, okay? Am I right, Jojo? I mean, I do not grow anything because I will kill everything that I grow. Um, but that's how you get a nice, successful, organic garden. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or not, but you should if you don't. It is uh, thriving. Stuff is thriving out there. So you just take the little center part out. And don't worry if it rips because what happens is the ricotta and the, the little bit of cheese that we're gonna put in there, I'll just take a little piece of provolone like that and you can fold it if you want to, you can tear it, whatever, to fit. You take a little bit of ricotta, like so, like that. Put that in there. And it's really hard for me to tell you how much you put in there because it just depends on the size of your zucchini flowers. And I wanted to do this video for you now because when I made this video, so you kind of pinch the tops 
look, it kind of holds everything in. When I made a reels of this a couple weeks ago, I had so many of you message me and telling me you could not believe that they were edible. And I was like, I'm sorry, do you have a garden full and you've been letting them go to waste? So I'm just gonna continue to clean these out and then we'll continue to stuff them and then we'll fry. Last one, I wanted you to see, we found another one um, who is still alive. So we're gonna take it outside. We're gonna let it live its beautiful life out there. Um, we actually have, so we're surrounded by farmers and we have a farmer around here that um, raises honeybees and they pollinate all of the beautiful plants and everything growing around us because like I said, we are in a farm area, so there's a ton of farming going on and they really help. I mean, our garden is absolutely booming and I've done videos in my reels and on my Instagram where you can see them buzzing all over the place, but that's how you get a beautiful garden, you know? They're doing a lot of the work for you. Okay, so you have these ready. I just wanna check the oil, make sure it's hot. Not quite there just yet maybe in like another little minute. Okay, so you can really stuff these with anything. I've also stuffed them with filling that I've had left over from like making zucchini or latini or anything like that with a little bit of ground beef in there and it was fabulous. Not today, but it was fabulous. So you take each one. This is a lot of batter, but I'm gonna use it to make some zucchini flour, uh, fr zucchini fritters after I'm done with the flours. You dip them in there, but you really wanna shake off the excess. You wanna really thin thin layer, yeah, that's nice. You want a very, very thin layer of coating. Um, otherwise it gets way too thick and then you don't taste, you don't actually taste the zucchini flowers itself. Don't have it up too high. I'm gonna do this in batches. I'm using a really small little skillet. Um, I use light olive oil. You could use sunflower oil, canola, avocado, whatever. And I just do these like a few at a time until they're a really beautiful golden brown color. When we're done with those, I have a couple of really small zucchini. We're gonna thinly slice them, add them to the rest of the batter and make fritters. I got a few zucchini that I'm gonna go ahead and thinly slice and add them to the leftover batter. You can do this with additional zucchini flowers. Now I know some people are gonna ask me, by the way, you're gonna to wanna to cut these really, really thin, almost see-through. I know people will ask me, uh, what hap you know, if you take off the flower, you're not gonna get a, a fruit. Well, there's, so on a plant, you got female flowers and male flowers. The male flowers are the ones that are not going to produce the fruit, so you can take those. However, you do need some left on the plant for the bees to pollinate. Otherwise, you if you don't have, if you don't pollinate with the male flowers into the female, you won't grow fruit, right? So you can take a lot of the male flowers, otherwise they're, they're just gonna die on the plant anyway. You just don't wanna take all of them because the bees need to do their job um, in helping the female flowers pollinate so that you, it produces these guys. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And if you don't know what they look like, male versus female, you can just Google it. It's pretty easy to tell, um, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I think I think nature has a way of, of really surprising us. And it's always so interesting to me because I would have had absolutely no idea, but Joe knows all about these things. And my nonna, she can pretty much grow anything and make it, and it's a success. She wants, um, Somebody once went to her house and gave her a papaya, like a papaya fruit. She'd never had one before. And she decided to plant the, the seed. Years later, there's a giant papaya plant growing in my nona's, uh, my nona's outside of her house. I'm like, what is this? She's like, oh, a papaya. I'm like, how'd you get that to grow? I planted the seed. There you go. Just gonna continue slicing. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour to the batter here because I want it to be just thick enough so that it doesn't fall off my spoon. I added a few already in, but that's perfect. I added a few in. I felt like it was a little bit on the thin side, but again, this is kind of like, I understand why my Nana doesn't measure. <laughs> um, although those look all really beautiful. That one, not yet. Um, because you kind of just have to play by ear, you know? Give that a little stir. And I do small ones like that, and they're just so good, so fantastic. If you don't get zucchini flowers, then just make zucchini fritters just like this. But if you had, just so you know, if you had extra zucchini flowers, you can do zucchini flower fritters instead of stuffing them, um, if you're into that kind of thing, which <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't be, 
but I know I am. I also switched pans because I just was not thinking and I had to make my fritters. That pan was way too small. <laughs> so I just got a bigger skillet. Um, and that's it. When they come out, you know, you put a little bit of salt on your fritter, a little bit of salt on your zucchini flowers, and that's it. I need those little specks right there. That's just a little bit of the, uh, of the ricotta. When it seeps out just a tiny, tiny bit into the oil, it does, it does that, but have no fear. It's all good. I'm just going to continue to babysit these until they all turn a beautiful golden brown color. Not that you need to see it because you just, you didn't come here for that, but, you know, you did come here for this. You did, right? You did come here for that. You did. I know you did. Uh-huh. You know? You cannot pay me and tell me to convince me that anything is better than home cooking. You just can't convince me of that no matter what you try to do because it isn't. Because that is associated with so many amazing memories, not only of Italy, but of my childhood and my nonna and my nonno when he would bring in crates of these um, zucchini flowers from his like friends from my nonna to make. Such amazing childhood memories, such amazing memories in general. I just love it. I'm gonna take these couple off. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much left to do it. I'm gonna write the recipe for you for the website so that you have it. This batter does make a lot, but again, Take the leftover batter and make yourself some zucchini fritters. You will not be disappointed. I would break into that, but you know I'll burn myself to death. So I don't want to do that. But I hope you enjoy spending time with me. The recipes on lauraandthekitchen.com. Get yourself some good home cooking. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy your week ahead. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.